Salutations everyone! Welcome to the Avis channel. If you're new here, hello, welcome. My name is Avis C. You could call me that either, either, or. And if you're coming back, welcome back everyone. I'm glad to see you today, hear from you today with a new video to show you all of something that I've been doing for the past months that has been helpful for me. And I was very excited to show everyone this new tool that I found to help everyone with their webtoon background making journey. Ah, wait a minute, wait a minute. Before you go on a crusade, just hear me out. Something happened called life where I was absent for a majority of it and I clocked out and with that came some unexpected hiccups along the road. So for instance, my computer was acting buggy for a good chunk of my month. It would come on, then turn off, come on, then turn off. When I turn it on, it would stay on, then come off. It was unexpected. I didn't know what to do, but my humdum brain did it. So I had to figure out what I did to the computer to make it act like that. Um, spoiler, don't, um, this is advice, don't delete your graphics card. Like, um, if you don't have a backup graphics card, don't delete that from your computer, even though if you go to the Windows help support page and they say delete your graphics card if it's malfunctioning, don't do it because your computer will start to freak out and doesn't have the code for a graphic card that's not there. So don't do that. Another thing that was hampering with my schedule was actually things outside of my sources that I could not control, but those things have been maintained and put under control. <laughs> works like that. So hopefully too many things won't keep popping up where I can't do videos and work on my webtoon and I could get back to a consistent schedule. And then there was also a close call, I like to call it, in the place in which I'm living at and it was not the most uh, pleasing experience to be in. So it had to be a malleable asset for the situation in which called to play by the rules, so to speak. Drastic. Okay, no more veering. We're going to talk about why you clicked on this video. It is for the subject of the day, how to make an easy background with this new software. Maybe not so new, but it's new to me that I found called Pecan Planner. You don't need SketchUp for this. And what I mean by that is I can't use it. I don't understand it. Go on and nab your mouse or your margarita if you're of age. And let's go. So when you download an open Pecan Planner, you're going to notice that there are four window panes in your control center. Don't be alarmed, don't be afraid. This is just view by view of the sculpture or model that you're about to make. And it's fairly simple. If you want to minimize the windows, you can, but we're going to go ahead and start up up here. I'm going to click on wall. You will see it if it's circled up and there are different options, but for now, we're just going to focus on creating a room. So you go up here to the control panel and you click on wall selection or another word for it is create a room. It will say add a room, add a rectangle, add a wall. You can choose in your case what you want to do for this step, but let's, I'm going to go ahead and go simple and just create a room, just a rectangular room. And so I'm finding my footing here and just, you can see the measurements, which is also really awesome showing me as I draw the rectangle onto the canvas. It's telling me what the dimensions are and how big it is in millimeters, meters perhaps. And you could change those settings in the settings if you like, if you want a more easy to read measurement. And there we go. I plop down the rectangular room. And once you have that on your canvas, you're going to notice that there are different views of the rectangle that you drew. And this is nice when you want to go ahead and look at each view, go ahead and click into each view and just see what the shape looks like in different dimensions and different angles of the shape. So I have like a top view here and then I have a like side view here. And then at the bottom I have like a um, isometric view. And then at the very bottom I have a perspective view. So these are all helpful views when you're trying to go ahead and see what, see how to make it look as realistic as possible or as fictional if you want as possible. And now that I have the different views in play, let's just go ahead and simplify this again and use only one view. Me personally, I like using the perspective view. So that's what we're going to use today. And all I have to do to do that is just maximize the window in the corner of the screen. It's a nice shape we got going on. Just a simple rectangle, as I said before. Nothing too fancy, nothing too snazzy, just something to get our footing in. I'm rotating the camera here just to look at it, just to show you guys that there are actually walls here, but there is no ceiling or floor. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and 
I'm going to look at the bottom view here, isometric view, just sampling the camera angles and looking all around. Click up in the control panel again where it says add floor and you hover over your model base that you drew. You can see the red outlines on the model right now and either you want to outside the walls or inside the walls. Either way it's going to make a floor so it doesn't matter. I'm just going to go ahead and choose inside and I click and it's down. There is a floor for our room and with the arrows on the display control I can move it up and down. I can move it left or right. I can also rotate it around. I could just click drag drop and move it wherever I want of the floor for some reason I can do that but we're just going to keep it on grand level go ahead and say undo undo put that back in place. Now that we have our floor for our room, I'm just going to go ahead and look at it, see if everything's okay with it. And there it is. It's just a simple room. You can move it around however you want. You just have to click and select all of it by dragging your cursor and just selecting all of it with the rectangle select tool. And then you can click on the arrows at the bottom and start moving the room around. I can also click on individual walls and move them around however I wish if I want to detach it from the original model form of the room. So I can move it up and down, left and right, just wherever I want, just like I did with the entire room. Now that we figured out the configuration of how to navigate the workspace, allow me to show you what else you can do with this nifty program. You can take the room here and you can expand it out if you want it longer. You can just edit it as you go. As you can see, I'm making it longer, shorter. I can make it, you know, the walls move around. I can also bevel the wall to a round shape. So it doesn't have to be just a straight wall. It can be a rounded circle, which gives it an interesting architectural design. You can also see from the top view that I'm displaying to you all that the flooring is not exactly filled up all the way. We can do that simply by deleting the floor and adding a new floor again, or you can just add it underneath the floor already put down. To add a ceiling to our home, all we need to do is again go to your control panel and see where it says ceiling. Click it, go ahead down to your model and look for the red outline and put it down just like that. Go ahead and zoom in to our room to see inside of it. What you do to do that is you click the magnifying glass at the top in the corner of your window pane and you just zoom in. Now that I'm looking around inside of the room, again, since I'm a webtoon artist, I need to have full control of the scene here and I feel like it's too cramped. I can't really uh, get a mass of the space that I want to see. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and do a simple trick of displaying or clicking off the ceiling. Now you could have done this by not adding a ceiling to begin with, <laughs> but if you just wanted that aesthetic feel later on when you render out the house, you don't want to lose that uh, aesthetic. So to hide the ceiling for now, you just go ahead and find where it says layers at the side, it'll probably be at the side ribbon over there. It'll say layers and just go ahead and bring that out. And but of course, what is an Ava video without mistakes? I accidentally unplugged the layer from the actual screen recording so you guys don't see it unfortunately but if you do find it just follow along with me i'm just turning on and off the ceiling the walls the floors you can probably see it'll probably say on the layer property it'll be marked as ceiling floor wall it'll be very simple to follow you can click the eye icon kind of like how you do in drawing programs you know you're clicking the opacity on and off you can go ahead and do that here and you can just turn things on and off just to see it and it's that simple and we could do that with the ceiling and like i am now i'm just gonna go ahead and hide the ceiling for now Whoopsh, i lied so i have the layers displayed at the screen as you can see here i found a way to display it for the screen recording as well you can see where it says all the layer names at the side i'm clicking things on and off showing you guys how it works and once the layers are worked out and everything is accounted for let's go ahead and look at this wall here from this angle that i have of the model scale as you can see it's kind of disconnected so all i'm going to do is click a little circle ball in the corner of the wall and connect it so even if you disconnect a wall from the other walls you can connect it right back with that circle uh click ball tool so easy yeah let's add a door we need a door for our room. So go up to your control panel and it will say door. 
click that and as you can see I'm just hovering over whatever wall that I want to put the door down on you don't have to worry about the calculations right now but just go ahead and click where you want the wall you can say specifically if you want or just put it down and there it is our door standing as it does so what can we do to fully automate it and change it to how we wish simply by kicking on the door that you created just take the door and the arrows you will see some tiny arrows go ahead and click that and as displayed i'm putting it up or down it could be a tall door it could be a short door you can do that also side to side with the width if you want a bigger door wider door you can do that if you want a smaller door skinnier door you can do that so as you can see the variances of how you can customize it is pretty pretty interesting you may also notice that the door handle actually goes down and up with the door unfortunately it's not constant but you have to do that manually yourself so when i make the door shorter you can see that the doorknob your handle stayed in its fixed position at the bottom you can go ahead and redo this by clicking the door looking to your properties window over to the side you will see a whole array of customizable options you can do through the door and look where it says door handle or handle it'll say something along those lines and type in the decimal points of how high how low you want the handle to be as displayed again here i'm showing you i went ahead and clicked in some integrals and the door handle changed accordingly and it matched up to where in the position that i wanted it to be speaking of the properties window let's go ahead and dive into this section of the tutorial i'm showing you here the wall the customizable walls you can actually click individual walls and change the height of each of them and the width and the slant and the curvature and the arch so i'm going to go ahead and click on a wall and I have my properties window popped up to the side and I am going to just type in some integers to show you guys how I can change the height of it individually. If I wanna change both walls like I am now, where I wanna click more than one wall to change the height of not the whole room, but just two walls, I do that by clicking shift and clicking the walls that I want to include in the piece or you can drag with the rectangular selection tool by clicking down your mouse and dragging it along but it's better if you do shift in this case and then once you got that selected look at your properties window type in the hefty depthy number you want to go ahead and put in and you're set and good to go zooming back into the door here i'm going to go ahead and show you guys that you can also switch the location of where the door is going to open so you can go ahead and click a little arrow at the bottom of the door it'll just say forward or backward or it'll have a display of forward or backward you click it and it switches the door like shown it shows it where it can open from the outside or the inside also you can switch its sides if you want the door handle on the right left you can do that just click the arrow down below let's see the door in action for what a door is useful for let's open it you can actually open the door in this program which is it you can open the door and look what it looks like so you just click the little swirl tool by the door again and you can angle its position just like shown like a real door would act it hits the wall like it's supposed to and it closes like it's supposed to again you can switch the in and out you can do it outside opening or closing opening on the inside of the walls now going back to the property menu you can go ahead and add some key little details to the door if you want to make it just a sick type of door you could go ahead and add a gate at the top so like a window pane at the top you can add or you can increase the um, width of the uh, door border the border of the archway you can make it thicker or smaller you can make the uh, window pane at the top window gate uh, arched or square you can make it have columns if you click the window pane itself and why not the door make that door sexy you can add a little window in the middle of it to have a little peephole a large one or you can add columns to the window inside of the door you can make it really stylized by adding a rose plate handle to the door or you can make it a sleek design of a double door which is something i like you can open the double doors one at a time too so one door opens the other one closes the one opens closes closes open door yeah you get the picture 
it's time for the companion of the loyal door windows of course so go up to the control panel it will say windows rounded windows or window openings in this case i'm going to go ahead and choose a a window front or just an opening and by doing that i click it just like the door click it down and put it on the wall that you so desire and i click it and there's an opening you can customize this opening by adding columns to it rows you can make it a very sleek designed window you can make it a dull boring bland window you can make it a gel cell kind of window you can do whatever you want to the window thus i'm going to go ahead and repeat the process like i did with the door and i'm satisfied when you're satisfied with the look of the window or any object that you have in your planner studio workspace you can actually copy and paste it so say we want a symmetrical viewing of it i'm not really so sure myself if there's a symmetrical ruler in this program that'd be nice that'd be awesome but if there is and you guys already know this uh let me know what you want to copy make sure you have that item selected Control c copy and then paste Control b and you put it where you want and what's a companion to a door uh, with a companion to the window blinds yes blinds of course we need blinds you can actually have blinds too if you go down to the control panel it'll say blinds you just click it and just like floor ceiling door window click the window or i think you can add the blinds on the door too i didn't test it but just go ahead and click on the window and click the blinds and it's there there are blinds on the window you can fully customize the blinds as well if you want them open if you want them closed if you want them horizontal if you want them vertical if you want them up down you want the handle off on you want a different type of opening style opening angle you can do all that as shown here one stairs add stairs just click the stairs option in the control panel click down where you want the stair planning form to be click again click again and there you have it some stairs i'm not so sure myself on this function personally because i don't really use stairs uh something to be advised guys if you're doing the um scene for your comic maybe it's just best to make rooms beside your rooms in the station that you're doing the workspace in so you don't have to kind of worry about making floors to your level plan but you really so could in this program but I, I rather not overcomplicate it i like it simple you know just all level field if you need the illusion of stairs you can just draw the stairs but if you want stairs in the room to make up for the space go ahead and click that click it down plan it where you want make sure you adjust uh the angling because it asks for that if you do that it'll go through don't worry you can move the stairs but i'm showing you now you can rotate them you can move them you can't do so for as freely as the room or um, any other objects a part of the layout but you can do so with an option if you go to the edit tab of the ribbon at the top and you click on the stairs the rotate tool is a little wonky i'll be honest but you can understand it just go ahead and rotate it how you wish i am going to go ahead and look at a top to down view to make it easier like a floor plan and just start rotating it around like so and then i put it in the position i want and when i'm satisfied i go back to perspective and i just get a little glimpse of what we have so far if you want handrails on the stairs just go ahead and click the handrails option it's a little circle by the stairs itself and you just click it and it says add handrails added added on both sides if you want one side if you wish and there you go you got yourself a good capable fleet amount of stairs for your fleeting feet all right time for color go ahead and locate the edit tool on the ribbon at the top and it will say fill tool it's a bucket icon click the color you want and just start filling in the colors if you, i'm gonna go ahead and choose yellow bright spunky clicking walls i'm just clicking wherever you can even color the window color the stairs you can color anything on this model and once you're satisfied with that i guess you can be done of course there's more of course now that we have a satisfying banana house i want to go ahead and show you guys i forgot to include this again how i changed the background because i wanted it to look more um 
like I wanted the model to pop out a little bit, just go over where it says presentation and you click on, I believe it's presentation or it might be environment. You click on environment and then it has a drop down menu, a drop down menu and you can go ahead and choose the color of the background. Just make sure you turn off the sky box because it's showing the sky. We don't want to see that. We want to see a color or you could input your own image if you want. Okay. You just click the icon that has a folder tool, browse through, click the uh, picture you want, and just put it in there. For now, I'm just doing a light color of gray. Say we want a little variance though. Say this yellow color is a bit too bland. I don't know what you gotta hate on my banana house, but I wanna add some textures to the house to make it look like it's really a house, you know? So you can do that actually. The Pecan Planner Studio has an ingrained tool where you can actually look up certain materials and items. Think of it as like, if you use SketchUp, think of it as the warehouse. Uh, speaking of which, you can actually use the warehouse in this program. Uh, I'll probably mention that later, but uh, go ahead and click at the top. It'll say catalog portal. Click that. I'm showing you here on the screen. It may be a little weird to navigate at first because it was like that for me because it is kind of a weird layout. I wouldn't call the UI exactly user friendly. But I would say it's just easy to understand. Once you got it open, it'll go ahead and pop out different types of companies, products, manufacturers, some high-end manufacturers that kind of sample the different materials available. Then you commence the average person window shopping experience mode. Yeah. Okay, you go ahead and look at a certain manufacturer, whatever you have clicked on. Go ahead and just make it easier for yourself and click on the option that says materials. So once I got my option clicked, whatever I liked or fancied, I think I'm going to take the cocoa toffee coffee kind of like a floor. It's nice texture. I think it bounced off well with the yellow. I could go ahead and change the color of the texture, but we're not there yet. Let's go ahead and click it and you're going to see that it has like a weird like paint bucket click the paint bucket it's going to download into the catch file of your become planner you can clear this out with a certain option it's like a um, sweeping tool so you could go ahead and clear out the catch so you don't have to use it again or it's not building up on your computer but go ahead and download it and it's in your catch you can use it and you can just click where you want to put down the color I'm gonna put it down on the floor Cruising back over to the window shopping mode, I want to have a nice color for the windows too. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this turquoise blue color and just click it, downloaded it, boom, and put it on the windows because that's what I want the color of the windows to be. Now that we are satisfied with the colors, materials, textures of the model, you can go ahead and open up the material editor. Go ahead and hit the edit at the top, say material editor, you'll find it somewhere, scavenge your eyes, look around, and pop it open. I have it on display here and I'm just going to click on what material I want to customize. So I want to customize floorboards. However, I can't quite see it because it's in this uh, render mode of texturize. It kind of resembles SketchUp a little bit, right? Uh, let's change the render mode. <laughs> but long story short, as I'm showing you guys, you can click it up. It's next to the customization tools where it says, you know, zoom in, zoom out. Um, where it says uh, panning, all that over there at the top, go ahead and click it says render styles. Or you can go ahead and say uh, view or presentation and the render styles will be there. And as you can see, as you can uh, realize, there are different options that you can change the rendering out to look like. I have a wireframe here. I have a uh, line frame here. I have um, realistic look. I have conceptualization look. I have um, the texture look, the colored look. All of these different styles can be used however you wish and you can even add render styles if you like, if you know how to operate this. If you just click the icon that says, you know, add render style and you can just change it however you wish. However, I like to use, me personally, I like to use the line uh, render style and as well as the textured render style because with the texture render style I like to achieve that SketchUp look you know kind of 3d looking because my things tend to be cartoonish looking so I need that kind of aesthetic also I like the lined out or the white 
looking one because I like to color my own things sometimes and I need that to make sure that it fits with the uh, atmosphere of the comic. So these two render choices are for me personally. See what you like though. But we're going to kind of uh, key in and kind of switch it up a little bit. Kind of uh, bait and switch <laughs> and change it to realistic render so we can see what's happening with the texture of the floorboards such as this with the customization options you get to display the exposure levels of the wood the treated wood or untreated wood i don't know and you can also change the hue of it you want to change the hue of the individual texture you have to click the pencil icon i don't have it displayed on the main screen here because go ahead and click the pencil icon it'll be underneath the texture itself and then you can see more options to customize it you can also change the size of the texture if you want the texture to be zoomed up zoomed in uh just pop it up on your screen you'll, you'll see what i'm saying when you click on material editor and you click on the texture you want to edit so you can change the as you can see i'm changing how shiny it is how gray it is the um, opacity the transparency it, it has Oh, there it is. I'm actually showing you how to fully customize it some more. So I'm changing this brown to a funky low tone pink. And I can also change the exposure levels again. I can change the warmth, temperature, temperature of the coloring, the saturation, the glossiness, the everything. If you want to add more shaders to it, you can import your own. So as you can see, as you can tell, this has a no riddles here, just it is what it is, it says what it is, and you get it accomplished. I am also doing the same for the windows as well, as you can also customize the other textures, remember that, of this model. So I'm making the glass, it's not as transparent as I want it actually. Glass is supposed to be glass, duh, so I'm going to make it more transparent to give that effect to it. Though we're retaining the color of it, the turquoise blue, but I can change it darker I can change it lighter you know transparent or not also if you want to change certain aspects of the model figure to match uh, another aspect so say that our uh, we want our glass to be the wood floor for whatever reason you can do that by just clicking the bucket tool at the top when you have the wood selected and clicking the glass or you can do that with the paintbrush you'll say um, select from selection and it'll click all the things that is part of the glass texture to be that certain um, wood now that we have everything set up down to our foundation down to the walls down to the doors down to the windows down to the blinds down to the stairs down to the everything we can go ahead and add some furniture of course the furniture is part of the scene of every scene that you have in a webtoon scene so to do this or accomplish this you can stop here and draw the furniture yourself or we can go ahead and open up one of three things uh two things rather you can draw it first foremost or you can go ahead and open up the warehouse sketchup warehouse it's an option at the top already there pre-made for you and go find your furniture note it will open up if you download the furniture it will open it up in a different window altogether so all you have to do there from then is to copy and paste it and put it into the model figure that you created your house or we are going to go ahead and venture into the default setting and that is the pecan planner products that they have so we're opening back up the uh portal catalog looking through the catalog to see what kind of furniture we can find again stating it is kind of oddly worded how some of this stuff is like a uh, world of furniture and product world and <laughs> world of colors you're gonna have to be jibing with that certain theme so we're gonna go world of furniture and then we're gonna scroll through and try to find maybe a sofa so i'm gonna be using easter graphics of course because they're again default you can find everything there and i'm just gonna go ahead and try to search out scavenge out a good couch there's seemingly a lot of different couches in which you can choose from as you can see i'm scrolling through and lo and behold there's a yellow couch why not add yellow to yellow of course so I'm going to go ahead and download that, clicking the icon over there, downloading, and there it is. Now it's floating and whatnot. It's kind of, uh, everything's happening all at once, but 
what you're going to have to basically do is when you download it, you're just going to put it somewhere, just put it down and then go ahead and get your bearings, you know, turn the camera to see it, check it out, see if it's like what you wanted. And when you put it down, the window's going to pop up, minimize it. And I'm going to go ahead and try to zoom out here or rotate the camera. Okay, there it is. There's our couch. It is a nice looking couch. You can move it, you know, just like everything else in this world. And you can rotate it. You can click uh, drag and drop. And I'm going to go ahead and try to put it in a suitable place. Just placing it down. And I think it's a nice touch to the house personally. But, you know, just looking at what the angle is right now. I think it probably needs a TV in front. I can also like, as you can see, make it higher or lower if it's like floating or something above the floor. You can go ahead and elevate it. You can also rotate it. Oh, one thing to note, um, if you want to do all those options, like uh, levitate it and rotate it, you're going to have to come down a little bit from the camera and zoom up on the product. So the um, cross arrow display kind of goes up so you can like do more with that. Um, display key thing. I'm going to go ahead and open up the catalog again and see if we can go ahead and try to find some more furniture. Found a TV. TV too small. Make TV bigger. So we click scale. <laughs> go ahead and click up to the edit tab at the top and it will say a lot of things. Just go ahead and try to find scale. Click the item you want to scale and make it bigger to fit the wall. You wish you could take something and deconstruct it, you can do that as well. While I was putting down this table here, I wanted maybe to see if I could take off the legs of the table. You can do that. Click on it, go to your edit, click ungroup. Make sure you click ungroup on the item that you wish to ungroup from its uh, counterparts. That way, as you can see, I could delete the top of it, the bottom, the legs, the, the little details. If you want to keep ungrouping it, you can do that. Go ahead and keep clicking ungroup, 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 and you can keep like de-escalating it. <laughs> What's a good word for this? Uh, dilapidating it into smaller counterparts of itself. So you could go down to the nitty gritty of the triangle geometry of the sketching design of the model. Now that you see that, if you want to go ahead and undo what you did, of course, say undo, or you can select all of the items that was once a part of the group, click it, drag it in and then say group and then say group 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 and it'll be back to normal it goes by levels so however much you click on ungroup or group it goes by one level each i believe also you can look at your layers and kind of play with that there i'm not really so much um i, I don't look at the layers like that we don't we don't work like that i just look at it to turn on and off certain uh aspects of the model but See what you can do with that. See if you can advance in that past what my expertise could cover and see if it can help you out with that sort of uh, venture. Now, this is where things probably get a little messy. I found a website that was a good example to teach you guys how it's kind of hard sometimes to navigate through some of these product worlds. But to go ahead and explain it to you, just look for a tag called DWG. That is a download file that the Pecan Planner uses and if you run into some like uh, fishy websites or websites that you're not so sure about, just go ahead and go back and don't use them. Also, there are some websites that require you to log in to download some of their items. In that case, I just give up and just hop on to the warehouse, see if I can find it there. Now, with this up, I wanted to go ahead and download this table here. I'm just going to click one, scroll through, kind of messy layout, but I'm going to scroll through and download the DWG and put it down. And we've made it to the end of the tutorial. That is all that I wanted to show you all with this awesome tool that I found. This amazing, spectacular, any adverb I can think of in the vocabulary of my vernacular. It is amazing and I just enjoy it so much. Over SketchUp in a heartbeat and no shade to them. But uh, I just, I don't know. I just don't work like that. And if you find yourself kind of struggling too with that program, maybe Blender or all those other programs, if you can use those, you're, you're a-okay -okay with me. But I like to kind of, I don't know, simplify it if I can. And I found this program that was suited for professional architects and it was just 
free and i was just like huh and then i was like what's the catch why isn't anyone using it that must be the catch it's not popular so and if it has made your experiences easier as well let me know down in the comments below tag it to me in twitter instagram i'm not active over there or over there because i'm just we do that sometimes we go ninja sometimes and if you want to go ahead and talk to me about any other topics or anything you want me to cover go ahead and pitch it to me i'll give it a swing oh 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 before i go down this rabbit hole of concluding everyone i want to go ahead and walk you through another step to the comp planner you don't have to do this so much you can go ahead and do the snippet tool and just snip it your backgrounds or we can go ahead and go through the render process here um so let's do that go ahead and click up where it says presentation and say render it'll probably say something like that or viewer I'm not so sure and then it'll pop up the render screen as you can see it has different options it's probably gonna look way different than what mine popped up to be um it's gonna look like this maybe simpler and it you click that just click down that um pencil icon so we can see more options so we can play with it there's three renderers involved uh ol s play yafarel and something else but uh just to advise you the two renderers under os take such a long time because they are for high quality renders with that said i'm going to go ahead and use the os ray and i'm going to go ahead and hit render uh the background's transparent but i'm going to go ahead and turn on the background because it's kind of an ugly checkerboard and it's going to put on that gray scale that we have in the original picture so it looks exactly how we have it on the canvas if you want to go ahead and move around the camera at the background do that do so and render out the picture again Make sure you're using OS Ray if you want the exact replica of what you see on the canvas. You can also change the render styles, of course, in the actual canvas to display differently like it does in the renderer. And once it's rendered out, it's going to give you a display and you can go ahead and hit save, the save icon to save the picture. Or you can copy it and copy paste it so you can save some space into your art program or whatever you're using to draw your comic with um you can also click the option to click the extra camera setting to have an exact layout picture you know scale by scale of what's going on with the canvas or you can go ahead and just do it manually yourself and with that i have some photos that have been rendered out to show you all for examples and i just wanted to recommend that if you are somebody who struggles with backgrounds with drawing backgrounds <laughs> with anything that has to do with backdrops give this software a go and see if it is to your liking see if it can help you with momentum of liking to draw certain things again and maybe even this can be a constructive uh, reference point for you maybe you don't have to copy paste this right into your comic but you can use these as reference pictures if you like do it how you wish and i wish to hear and see if this is actually effective for everyone else out there who may have had the same struggles as me for the times that I would work on the comic. So the secret's out. I got nothing else. No secret stashes in the arsenal. Mm -mm, that's all I got. Power cards on the table. Unless. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Or if you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Go ahead and tell me what you liked about it. Tell me what you didn't like. And tell me if you followed along. If you want to see more videos from me, subscribe to my channel. And here's to wishing that the next video that is soon to be plotted and employed will come out at a time that you all will need it. Because I don't want to disappear for a month again.